need and get it on a platform mm. that's available all the time. So um, we're not so much into that. Um, uh, what you mentioned is okay. You are full circle now, and uh, uh, what you said ten years ago was the in megabits. Now it's in gigabit, but still we have the same issues. Um, what we see is that okay, uh, or if we're talking about disruption uh, as a whole, we see that okay, you can't predict what will happen, but you can predict okay the trends which are moving towards mm. something. And what we can say is that okay, maybe in not ten years, but maybe in three years, uh, ten gigabit is the normal bandwidth for a ship or whatever. So uh, to um, to the the management of the data is one aspect, but as for at least for Siemens, this is not the approach we are taking. We're taking we're taking your data and giving value to it because, in a larger sense, also collecting data is something we have done all over, the, all putting value to it, using it for something, using it for information uh, that you can give some added value to the data. That's that's the important thing. Um, and one cool aspect uh, with shipping is also data in relations because you have now the potential to collect data from all over the fleet in real time and then if you can see data in relations you can give new business models one great aspect or one great example of this is uh, if you're going to a totally different industry is uber uh, who would have thought that uh, a primary only software company could take over the taxi service Remember, they have no physical infrastructure, they have no uh, taxis, they have no personnel, they have nothing. They only have data and they're living on an existing infrastructure, oh. which is the internet. So this is a total disruptive change based on only data. And that's quite incredible. Who could have predicted something like that only five years oh. ago? It's basically impossible. So, And I think this is also something that yeah, it's basically giving you an impossible task to predict the future. You can only see the trend. But as more things get connected, and the bandwidth, as we spoke about, is getting more common and more uh, more available, then new business opportunities will come as a result of that. But it's it's the smart guys who can see that. Okay. Mm. So it's really it's not a case of actually knowing what is going to be happening no. four or five years down the line. But it is a case of just having the knowledge that you need to keep your eyes open to see the opportunity of what you can and kind of do. Because I just wanted to go to Katerina now, if I may, because from your perspective, Navios is a ship manager, but uh, could you first of all tell me a little bit about Amitech? Because it's, yes. it's a new organization for me. I'm not particularly familiar with it. But then I want to ask you the question about, from, a, from your perspective, just how connected do you think a ship should be or could be? Okay. So first of all, um, Amitech is my second uh, hat. My first hat is uh, Navios. I'm the IT manager of Navios group of companies. We own and manage more than 150 vessels of all kinds. So Amitech is the uh, association of IT managers in uh, shipping. Uh, we are mostly based in Greece. This is an opportunity, uh, an initiative that uh, started uh, maybe 15 years ago back in 2002, I think. We have uh, around 150 active uh, members, IT managers and uh, administrators in the shipping industry. And what we are trying to do is to bring together the ship owners from one side and the developers, uh, suppliers, providers of all these very nice solutions here on uh, the other side. So we are trying to decrease the gap between the two sides. Uh, so, to, to coming to your question, how much connected... How, how connected should how, yes. a ship really be? Does it need to be as connected? I'm sure all these gentlemen here, well, actually, apart from uh, the gentleman from the Swedish Maritime Authority, yes. would want you to buy their systems and the solutions and Definitely. put them on the ship and connect we them. Have, we have over 200 ships. Uh, okay, <laughs> sorry, yes, you do. Uh, so, how connected okay. do you think it... it how, what, what, do you, what does one need? What do you think? Very, <laughs> is the answer, very connected. Okay, for us, uh, the easiest thing is to, first of all, uh, uh, we now have the bandwidth. Okay, let's agree on this. We now have the tube at uh, affordable prices. 
we are not discussing anymore how expensive it is. Uh, I am fairly sure that most shipping companies can find a suitable plan to fit their particular needs. But uh, with uh, this bandwidth, of course, the easiest thing to do is uh, to give the excessive bandwidth to the ship, uh, to, to the seafarers. Because, of course, we all fully agree that uh, these people that, are, uh, that belong to the generation to come, to the, to the youngest, they cannot live without connectivity. So the easiest thing is to give them uh, prepaid cards so that they can chat and Facebook and uh, Snapchat and all these nice things. But I don't think that the real value is there. Of course, there is value because we attract uh, better uh, crew members that will uh, facilitate our daily jobs. But for me, the real challenge is to take advantage of this uh, extra bandwidth for the business needs of the company. Uh, of course, I agree with the previous speakers that uh, there is uh, uh, an ocean of data which is available to all shipping companies. Uh, so for us, uh, and this is also the role of Amitech, uh, for us the challenge is to try to convince the traditional ship owners that still don't believe in this uh, revolution and are kind of uh, skeptic as to whether we should publish everything and they believe that uh, all our data will be available to anyone to share. So we must uh, try to convince them that uh, each company can get real value out of this uh, information by, first of all, by improving the services themselves, by making better products. If, for example, I disclose, I, I give data about uh, main engine failures or trends for a failure, they will definitely uh, take advantage of this data to optimize the materials or the systems they use to, to operate. So this is one thing. The other thing is that uh, the shipping company is being through a tough time as uh, regards charter rates and uh, mm. money. So uh, big data will definitely assist in this, uh, in this to for us to find ways to get better extra uh, profit from areas that uh, were not accessible so far. So you're saying it's become more cost effective, there's a lot more benefits that are emerging and it, it sounds to me also like you're saying that a lot of the, some of the owners, they're still learning how to make the most out of this opportunity, both from having an affordable um, amount of bandwidth to do something with uh -huh. and um, also coming to terms with the fact that they're bringing in a new generation and these new generation, are you finding this new generation also coming up with some of the ideas? as well as these opportunities both within the ship management or ship owner industries as well? Uh, definitely there are new generations in the shipping companies as well which definitely bring uh, new ideas. Uh, the traditional, the older ship owners, um, some of them, not all of them, uh, are resisting. <laughs> uh, one, of the, one of the things of course is uh, the one I just mentioned mm. about uh, confidentiality and they, they think that we will spread the information to the planet. But uh, I, I see a trend. I see a trend to even to the traditional shipping companies. They start to trust technology more than they did uh, five years ago. They start to believe in technology. And uh, I will use Navios as an example. Uh, Ms. Franco, who is our CEO, is very uh, technology literate, trusts technology. Uh, big data in our company five years ago, she ignored me. <laughs> but when we uh, showed her some very nice diagrams from our data that we had uh, collected without her knowing anything, of course, she said, I want this thing. <laughs> so I think this is a trend. Convince them with uh, live examples. I'm going to stay on the confidentiality issue here. I'm just going to go over to Frederick if I can, from the Swedish Maritime Authority, obviously you want to be able to monitor ships, you want to be able to see what ships are doing to make sure they're doing the right thing. So from your pers perspective, perhaps have you got the opposite view when it comes to confidentiality of the data insofar as you want to see if there's anybody doing anything wrong? Uh, 
Uh, well, uh, not exactly the opposite, I would say. I, I, uh, we are into to this uh, digitalization trend as everybody else, of course, and, and uh, uh, we have to prove that sharing data is also beneficial for, for all companies, not only me as an administration. And, and uh, I mean, if we can prove that if you're, for example, sharing your voyage information to me, then I can give you benefits in, in safety, not only safety, but also in efficiency in port calls, for example, and everything about that, and, and weather optimization, and, and as you said, the, the time slot allocations to things, and all, all, the, all the things. Uh, for example, a lot of work is pouring into to the, the actually sharing of, of uh, voyage-related information now. Uh, as you said, uh, the um, VDRs, for example, give me that information now. It's, it's, if I can hand that over to our VTS centrals, that would be really, really nice. And this is really ha already happening in, in, in the fleet operation centers around the world, of course. Uh, some of the shipping companies can actually close and open watertight doors, for example. Uh, that's a bit scary, but, but I mean, that's, that's where we're moving towards, towards now. And, and if, if I say to the business, give me your routes and I will give you a lot of, lot of information in, in exchange, because we are sitting on a lot of data that we could provide to you if we have the route, for example, as an enabler for that data. Uh, uh, this is not the meaning that we will put it on the Pirate Bay, for example. I mean, it's, it's, uh, we, we, we manage uh, transactions ashore every day, and I mean, it, there is ways to do this. So, so I wouldn't say that uh, uh, security is a really, really big thing for us. And, and uh, some of the things that shipping company thinks is really business related is, isn't actually. I mean, that they often sh quite beneficial to, to actually share that kind of data. ETAs, for example. Some of the companies say that, no, we will never tell the ETAs to anybody. But when you start doing that, a lot of things happen. A lot of things. Turnaround towns in port, safety issues. Uh, uh, pilots, for example, our pilots, our icebreakers, everything got, got much more smoother and they tend to earn much more money than if they didn't share that kind of data. Um, it's, it's, uh, I, I would say that, that a lot of the business cases in this is sharing data is, is much better than actually con confining the data. Yeah. Do you find that, Piers, that their companies are wanting to talk about how they can share the data more and more? Yes. Um, I think in general you, you've got companies that um, embrace the technology uh, and they realize there are elements, specific elements of data that can, when collated together with other companies, bring a, a common benefit. But of course there are also commercially confidential proprietary levels of information that um, they, they don't wish to, to share. So I think it rather like the Internet of Things, it means so many things to different people. Um, it really is so specific. You know, the, probably the, the, the only real mass, man, well, data sharing that goes on today has to be regulatorily mandated. Uh, and that's, you know, in effect, the, uh, the, the, the tracking of vessels and the mand mandatory uh, port arrival record, etc. That's probably as far as it goes today. Beyond that, um, there isn't anything, to my knowledge, that is being genuinely shared to, to better the community as a whole. But I do believe that as many of those vessels become uh, fully connected, and I'm not talking about the high-end vessels, I'm talking the generic mercantile marine vessels, um, as they become connected through Amitech, through a lot of the, the regulatory bodies, um, and the coming together of minds, there will be a nirvana moment where actually people say, probably in the coffee shop, they say, yeah, actually, we're monitoring, for example, our fuel consumption or something like that. There's going to be something one day that triggers it, and everyone's going to have the same problem, and they'll come to the conclusion, well, if we could actually collate that and actually send that empirical data back to XYZ to derive a common benefit, I'm sure it's going to come. Mm. I don't know what that is at the moment, mm. but uh, certainly the opportunity exists. Mm. Have you seen this, these questions that we're talking about in the maritime industry, Doug? As you, because I, I know Ericsson's involved in some some very high-profile projects with the likes of Volvo um, and you know other sort of transport media. Are these issues? Can you say that there are similar issues that you've seen other? transport modes or other industries have and they've overcome these. Are there some examples that you could show where other industries have picked up on the issues and solved 
their issues, whether it's by trusting the technology, etc. Um, there are some uh, some examples. I think I, I, I just want to go back to a, a couple of things, that, um, yeah. and I'll be a little bit controversial. <laughs> um, so um, you mentioned about uh, connectivity and. Um, I think the implication was that connectivity nowadays is um, uh, the availability is there and ship companies don't have an issue with access to, to connect connectivity. I think one of the reasons why Ericsson have partnered with Speedcast is actually um, connectivity shouldn't be taken for granted. If you talk to the average, or if you're know, talking to uh, Maersk every day and you think with their purchasing power that things would be perfect for them and it's uh, in, by no way um, the case. Um, there are always issues with connectivity. There's always an issue with uh, cost. I'm not saying that price is always an issue in this, in this industry. It's about value as well. I, I think the one-size-fits-all model that we've t t traditionally had to bear with, um, with um, is, is not always relevant with a company with a mixed fleet, um, where some of the vessels may need um, more or less communication than others. And so I think um, is a lot better than 10 years ago, don't get me wrong, but I think there's a, a ways to go and, and the likes of uh, uh, mixing uh, satellite with terrestrial so that when vessels are into uh, the, the, the GSM coverage they can um, have the benefits of cheaper uh, connectivity, all of these things is, is driving innovation and I think that um, and, and speed cars are trying to ad address that. Uh, going back to um, examples of, of, of data sharing, um, yeah, yeah. If you look at the aeronautical industry, um, which is often given as a as an example of uh, data, data sharing, I mean, the aeronautical industry is all, also equally um, highly regulated as well. And I think some of the things that they're doing, um, as 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 has been as a result of uh, of regulation. Uh, you mentioned uh, Volvo. I'll just think, for those of you who don't know, er, er, um, every Volvo car that comes off the production line now is connected. Okay, and Volvo made a, a, a decision, strategic decision that their business has got to be more digital. Uh, all of this, actually, is, is to drive a closer relationship to customers. Right? And uh, whether in the shipping industry, aeronautical industry, at the end of the day, somebody's going to be paying the services that you're, you're trying to offer. And, and Volvo recognized that they needed to have a different model. Um, so now, with their cars connected, their service agents can now determine when your car needs a service, um, they can call you in automatically, but also they can do things like uh, getting parts ordered uh, specifically for your car because they know what parts are, are, are being worn out. Um, but they've also started to recognise that they have an opportunity to provide different business models to us as consumers. So 90% of the car services, which traditionally you drive your car into garage and they service it, actually have realised that they can be done in, in situ. So why not uh, take the engineer out of your car and do the oil change or filter change, etc. Et uh, the other thing they're thinking about is, um, is really cool, which is um, Amazon, for example. Um, why not give a one-time passcode to Amazon to deliver a package to the boot of your car rather than having it delivered to your home? So all sorts of new service models are starting to come up, and new business models are starting to... Well, last one you gave, I actually found that. I ordered something through a Swedish delivery and I had the option of pressing the button to say, do you want it delivered into the boot of your Volvo? I don't have a Volvo, so I couldn't, but it was there. You're right. <laughs> so, uh, obviously, digitization does bring um, new opportunities, but I, I, you know, it might sound strange coming from a, an organization that's all about innovation and digitization. But you've got to start from the business, right? So you've got to start thinking. We, we often see more as a consultancy company rather than a technology company because the technology has got to inform the process on the other way around. Mm. So you, you've got to start to think about how to bring your customers closer, first of all, how to make mm. yourself more operationally efficient. I mean, in, back in the day, we used to call it process re-engineering. Yeah. Um, Sorry, I'm just going to ask you, Katrina, when we talk about, you know, Douglas was there talking about these examples where you can suddenly go, ah, okay, we can do this, we could do that. Have you found with Amitech, some of the, uh, the members are going, have we tried this, have we tried that? Are you beginning to look at what this level of platform connectivity could possibly provide you and go, oh, wow, have you had some sort of eureka moments during the last few years where you've gone, let's try this out?
that's distraction. <laughs> okay, so first of all, with, uh, with Amitech, I forgot to mention previously that we have a very active uh, uh, community, uh, a knowledge sharing community. Uh, we have a forum in our website and uh, we post questions regarding new technologies uh, in a personal manner. I mean, we address the questions maybe to specific people that we know that have these uh, new technologies or solutions or whatever. Uh, so through this network, we share experience, and which is uh, the true point of view, not the providers and the suppliers' point of, point of view. It's the users' point of view, which is the most useful, I believe, with the real problems that come up and the solutions that uh, uh, thought or someone uh, has uh, got a supplier. So we see that uh, there are some um, emerging new solutions that become more uh, uh, public. <laughs> uh, first of all, uh, uh, telemetry. We, we see that um, more and more companies get uh, data from uh, from the ship, from various sources, uh, but uh, still, of course, I'll have to wrap up. Uh, still, the problem is the lack of uh, standardization. We still don't know what to do with uh, this data because one company wants to monitor these five things, the other company wants to monitor some other things. Uh, the data sources are in different formats, so we cannot have a unique diagram, for example, to to but fit all. But it is working. There, there is a lot of energy going into using these levels of platforms uh -huh. in, the, in the future. There, Wonderful. There is, yes. We're just running out of time. I've yes. got, I'm going to let Piers, as the keynote, just have the last word. I just want to sum up um, just by thank, thanking the, the, the speakers. I, I, I think we're all pretty much agreed that the actual ability to make real-time connectivity globally accessible at an economic price point now exists. The challenge is now going to be optimizing what gets done with that because it still is finite. And um, I do personally think there will be the eureka moments where you know we will realize that there are certain things that we can do today um, that we're, we're not doing. And it will be for the benefit of the um, shipping community as a whole, um, either economically or um, or operationally, but either way, um, the, the future is very bright, but it is very complex, and uh, that's why you need to come together as a partnership because there are a lot of moving parts in this industry and they will continue to move. Good, thank you very much, Katrina. Gentlemen, for your time, thank you. Gentlemen, for your time, thank you. Gentlemen, for your time, thank you. Gentlemen, for your time, thank you.